Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK into your world, into your home, into your space. And yeah, if you like what I talk about, put the thumbs up, put the thumbs down, subscribe, share. I'd appreciate all of that. Um, for my subscribers, they're always a happy bunch, always interacting. Well, sometimes not so happy, sometimes I get quite angry, quite animated and passionate about topics. But they're always willing to respond, and that is the good thing. So anyway, I wanted to talk about a very controversial topic, to be honest. It's about these children who are not being, um, who are not being registered as citizens, born in the country, but they're not being registered as citizens. And there's masses of them, hundreds of them, if not thousands, I believe there's thousands of them. And all these children who are not being registered as citizens are adding to the illegal immigrant numbers. But they're technically not illegal. They have a statutory right to be registered as a UK citizen. So you might ask the question, if they are eligible to apply for British citizenship, why are they then categorised as illegal? Well, the thing is, is that, as you may know, the British Nationality Act took away automatic citizenship rights. So being, that's the 1981 British Nationality Act. So being born in the UK did not automatically mean that you were automatically a citizen unless the father was a British citizen. Or the mother can be a British citizen. Both of them can be British citizen. But if the mother was not a British citizen and the father was, then the child would have got automatic rights. But if the father never married the mother, the, the child would then have to be registered. If the father never married the mother and the father didn't register the child, the British father, then that child would then have to be registered as a British citizenship. And you know what I believe? It might sound a bit sinister. You might think I've lost lost the plot. But, you know, we black people are studied a lot. We are such a predictable race. You know, and we can't blame people from taking advantage when we're so bloody predictable. Why do I say this? You know, black Brits, especially black men, black British men, they never married the mother of their children. The only reason black women were married in this country, young black women were married in this country, was because people from the Caribbean came over here and they wanted a visa. That's how they got married. Right? You wouldn't find a black Brit, not the normal black Brit, black British man, marrying a black British woman. They would live with them. Maybe when they're about 50, 60, they might marry them. Maybe 40, 50, 60, they might marry them, but not while they're young. And these mothers would have children for these black British men who weren't marrying them. Why am I mentioning this? Because that is why these children, thousands of children, are being left in a vulnerable position. They're in dire straits because now the mother who is no longer with the father and needs the father to register the child cannot, regi cannot afford to register the child. And the Home Office has put the price up 51% over the last five years for registration. They've made £22 million in one year through child registration. And so what's happening now is that the mothers who are probably on low income, they can't find £1,012 to register their children, and especially if they've got more than one. What this means is that those children cannot do, especially as adults, they won't be able to get jobs, they won't be able to go for a driving license, they won't be able to get loans from banks, they won't be able to get, take further education, they won't be able to access health care. 
their lives are ruined. And why I say that, it, that the we are so predictable is because the way the British Nationality Act is written is written that if the if the British father doesn't marry the Brit the mother, regardless of what nationality she is, whether she's British or um, from the Europe, from Europe, from Spain, from Africa, regardless of where she's from, if he hasn't married his baby's mother, that is when the child is placed in jeopardy. The child's immigration status is in jeopardy. And a lot of those fathers never married the mothers. And so the way that British Nationality Act is written, i.e. the father has to marry the mother, either the father registers the child or the father marries the mother, then that child can then be registered free of charge and becomes an automatic British citizen. But, oh no, the black British father, baby has mother, baby has a um, mother has a baby. Actually, I wrote a poem about that. I wonder if it's in this book. Hold on one sec. It's called Baby Father. I hope it is. I might remember it if it's not in here. Check for me is in here. Baby Father it is. Let me just read out this poem I wrote quite a long time ago. Half English, half Patwa, as you know, it covers both um, both of my heritages then. Be a bit father. Away you there when we need you. You lay down with we. You beg we give you pickany. And then you don't provide for we. Be a bit father. Sometimes me feel fi to commit murder. Because when we want you. Me can't find you. You love the boss about your pretty pickany them. And the son you have for another woman. And yet you don't provide for none. Baby father, you have to give me support. Because if you never sweet talk we, we would have never get caught. Now you are me done. Because we can't get on. The whole relationship seems to be wrong. My daughter, I look up and ask, and I watch me tears and I ask me, does my daddy really care? Me have a ball out because him never about. Him never around for carry the can. Promises and lies just disguise the fact him have no ambition. You tell me for hush up and then you start skin up and tell me about it's just my imagination. You know you used to play the man with your woman then when you're picking your dead for hungry. Every week you put on your clothes and gone for rub up one girl in our party. Before you talk about rave, you should have saved a few shilling for we. You don't even know if you're picking it them or walk with hungry belly. You hardly hug us and kiss us and tell us you miss us. You don't really give a damn. Why don't you try a little harder? To, be, to ease up the pressure and take your responsibilities like a man. Don't make it harder upon your baby mother. Be a proper baby father. So yeah, um, that came to mind only because I was thinking about how the relationships used to evolve. And that's how it was. Meet a man in a dance. We're going back to 1970s, 80s. You meet a man and a dance. You rub up. You dance. You take him home. Next thing you know, the man is living with you. You then have a baby for him. And then him, then him start dating other women, him have all kind of other women. You still accept him back every now and then because you're pregnant. And then him end up having a baby for another woman and another woman. And... You know, and these these relationships just used to evolve and then they'd reach a point when he'd give up all the other woman and you would be the main woman, he'd come back and live with you. And then when he'd come back and live with you and you're about 40, 50 and he's about 40, 50 and he's 
all things are drop out and he's losing his hair and he doesn't feel so attractive. He's going through the middle age crisis and he wants a little reinsurance. Then he'll say, come let me get married. Maybe other woman might say it and they go off and get married. But what about the children? And the thing is, there wasn't those laws back then. So these poor children are being penalised for that behaviour, for that lack of responsibility. And the British nationality has been designed to trap those children because they know those black men. They must have a record. They know those black men ain't marrying no, nobody. Those black British men, they're not marrying anybody. And that's why I said if it wasn't for. And the thing is, even when the, the whether the Caribbeans, whether they came from Jamaica, Guyana, whatever, when they married the, the, um, the British mother, that didn't that didn't count for the children. The children still didn't qualify to that degree. The mother would still have to register. She'd still have to pay because it, the onus was on the British father. That is where that was the um, solidifying block. So the fact that the mother was British and married a Jamaican or married a Trinidadian or married a Guyanese. That didn't matter because the children would still need to be registered. And if they weren't registered, they are in the predicament that they are in now. And so it is such a shame that thousands and some of them are being deported. Some of them is a bit like the DACA children in America, detained in this big facility in in the UK, it's the same thing. You've got children detained in a facility waiting for deportation to the non-British parents' home that they don't know, they've never been, they don't know nothing about. Do you think that's fair? Whose responsibility is it? Is it the parents' responsibility to have known what the law was? Is it the parents' responsibility to have had that mindset where, look, we've got a child, we should be getting married. Because remember, this country is built up on morals. I mean, yes, we could question their morals sometimes, but it's built up on morals. It's built up on marriage. It's built up on Christianity. And yes, like I said, it could be warped sense of morals, warped sense of Christianity. But the fact of the matter is, it's built up on a man and a woman getting married, having a home and having 2.2 children. That is what the UK um, system is built on. So you come in with your Caribbean culture or whatever it is. And I don't even know if it's a Caribbean culture because I don't know if they get married young in, in, the, in the West Indies. I don't know. I know in Asia they do. They get married young. And in some African countries they do, but I don't know about the Caribbean, whether or not they get married young. So if they come over here with the mentality and they don't have to get married or nobody are going to tie them down and they don't realise the consequences are for their children, then what can we do? You've played right into the immigration's hands, rendering your children vulnerable, stateless, without a future. Anyway, let me see what I've highlighted here. Um, children born in the UK are expected to pay 1,000 to 112 pounds. The Home Office is making a 640 pound profit. Um, and it only costs them 372 pounds to process. Children born before the 1st of January 1983 to British mothers can apply for registration as a British citizen under the Section 4C of the British Nationality Act 1981, but it will cost £1,012. They will normally qualify if they would have become British citizens automatically under that act had women been able to pass on citizenship in the same way as men. That's what I'm saying. The British male can pass on their citizenship to the child at no cost. You see how... Mm, 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 mm. If I could do that thing with my throat, 
you know, they have that thing that um, some people do when they're really disgusted about something. They do this, I don't know what it is. Um, what else? Black men hardly ever, I've already said that. Um, the Project for Gener for Registration of Children as British Citizens, PRCBC, says the fees are unlawfully high, but but can they do anything about it? The Home Office make over 60% profit on each application. The sad thing is that these children who have statutory rights to register as British citizens, but because their parents can't afford it, they are being added to the number of illegal immigrants. So, you know, they're in a precarious situation. The majority of parents can't afford to register their children because they're on low income. They've been hence shoved to the bottom of the pile. And the thing is, the children are not illegal, but they're made to feel that they are on paper. And like I said, you know, some parents, some are being detained, removed, posh way for deported. And just like the Windrush generation who didn't have the paperwork, but were legally entitled to be in the country, these children whose parents cannot afford to register them are being kicked out or deprived of human rights and basic needs. Citizenship should be a right, but just like America, birthright citizenship does not exist. But if there is a provision for children with parents without settled status, i.e. illegal immigrants, but who are born or grew up in the UK, allowing them to register as citizen, why is there such an astronomical fee? And I don't understand why the Home Office allow children of illegal parents to register as citizens if they have to pay a fee of £1,012. That's what I mean. I, I copied this. It said... But if there is a provision for children with parents without settled status, but who are born or grew up in the UK, allowing them to register as citizens. So to me, parents without settled status, aren't they illegal immigrants? Or are they saying that those ones that are on that, who keep applying, so they don't have settled status, they have, well, I would have thought they would have settled status, even if they're on even if they're renewing their visa every five years. But if you're, 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 you're prepared to take money from them. So whose fault is it? Is it the parents for not knowing the law and having children? Is it parents being too poor to pay for citizenship? Or is it the government for pricing them out of citizenship? Who should be responsible for the fate of UK-born children who have not been registered? Should it be the parents, even though they can't afford it? The government um, should recognise them as citizens via the birth certificate. So Home Office says it doesn't matter that they cannot afford to become citizens now. When they can afford it, they will be able to apply. But meanwhile, the immigration figures are distorted. Thousands and thousands, they're adding them to the immigration, inflated immigration figures when it's not accurate. The immigration white paper is a charter for the wealthy designed to attract the richest migrants. Um, and notice if they're rich, they're migrants, but if they're poor, they're immigrants. Have you noticed that? Rich, if they're, they're, if, they're mi if they're rich, they're called migrants. If they're poor, they're called immigrants. I'll tell you why. But it is about being rich. I mean, these, these children are being priced up because their parents can't afford to register them. And you know that the UK has a mandate, just like the USA, they only want to attract the super wealthy. They don't want low income people coming in. They don't want to have um, people who are unemployed or who are on benefits in the country. And worse still, they don't want their children here neither. And this is what they're saying. We're gonna charge you 1,012 pounds. If you can't afford it, you don't belong here. Because we only want people who can afford it. If you can't afford it, you and your kids go back. The Home Office claims that children in this precarious situation can access Social Security, health and education with indefinite leave to remain, for which there is a fee waiver. But in actuality, it doesn't work like that. And also in the United States, they've just increased their immigration fees by 
in some cases it's 60 percent but 83 percent they're doing the same thing they're pricing out poor people they don't want poor people in the country i mean on the one hand you can't say you blame them but on the other hand you know were they always poor how did they become poor those mothers um parents who can't afford to um pay for their children's um registration or citizenship how did they get in that position is it because they've been made redundant you know have they had some unfortunate accident you know has something happened that's put them in that position where they are now low income we don't know what the circumstances is and the, and the immigration officers doesn't care what the circumstances in is if you can't pay if you can't afford it you don't belong here so a new rule came out on the 14th of November in America and it hyped the um, immigration fee from 640 to 1170 and for permanent residents from 1220 US dollars to 2195. So naturalization system is now designed for the well off. Nine million people are now eligible for naturalization and they're priced out because of the you know, the increase of fares. Like I said, 83% they've increased it. So if you can't afford to apply, you become illegal. And if you're illegal, you get kicked out. Like I said, USA, UK do not want minimum wage earners and low income families in their country anymore. And this is a way to keep them out. It's just sad that children have to suffer in the process. So, um, The Guardian and The Telegraph have something, I think, yesterday and today about that. So I thought I would just talk about it again. I've talked about it in the past. You know, I keep talking about it, but, you know, it's not going away. Children are still suffering. And it's really, really unfortunate that you've got children in this country, born in this country, who are not U UK citizens and who cannot be UK citizens because their parents cannot afford to pay £1,012 for their citizenship. On top of that, I think there's some other little administration fee. But who's got one over £1,000 these days? And if you've got more than one child, what do you do? All I'm saying, boy, I said, you know, Black Brits now, if you're having children, black British men, if, you're, if you decide to have a child, secure that child. If you don't want to marry the mother, at least register the child. You can pass on your citizenship free of charge. Do that. If you don't do anything else in this life, do that one thing for your child. Whether you speak to the mother or not. That's all me, I beg you. That's all for now. Bye-bye.